What is up, YouTube? In the garage one more time. XLCH still needs to go back together. Got some parts on, got some parts off. Tis what it is. We're scrambling. Mad dash rush. But we also have a Edelbrock carb apart because we need to figure out what is going to happen. UPS truck is here. We'll be right back. All right, Edelbrock carburetor. Hit up at the uh, local auto parts store. Just going to buy a rebuild kit through them. Just the standard 600 CFM. Little Brock, sixty dollars, fifty-five in tax, whatever it was. It was just shy of sixty bucks for some paper gaskets. This carb works really well. Everything else is working perfectly fine. However, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, good old buddy, sent me a discounted set for twenty dollars. Probably made in China. Probably not that good. I don't know, actually. $60 for a gasket set. I don't need the floats. I don't need anything else. None of that comes in the actual Edelbrock kit, by the way. Chinese version for $20 has floats, needles, springs, everything, plus gaskets, base gasket, and the air filter gasket. Edelbrock kit does not. So we're going to jam that new, uh, basically just the gasket, the plate gasket for the upper. We're going to put that back in here. I'll turn you around. We'll drop it on, see if it actually fits. If it doesn't fit, you'll know why it's made in China for $20. If it does fit and everything works, save yourself some money, because $60, Edelbrock, really, $60 for your paper gasket set. I'm not paying that. Accelerator pump is still good and working on this, so I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about anything else other than the actual paper gaskets. I might pull the boosters and replace those. We'll see, we'll turn, it around, turn you guys around and see how this goes. Okay, per usual, we have zero space to work on anything in here. The uh, <laughs> motorcycle is taking up the entire lift. So we are very short on space, along with several of the other things that I have. So we will grab our Allen key and my ratchet. Like I said, I know all the passages on this are free. I'm not doing a full carb rebuild and cleaning everything out because we don't have to. My least favorite part about Edelbrock carbs is these little clothespin clips. I lose them all the time, so hopefully we have new ones of these in the bag. I've used these china gaskets before without issue. But Again, it's just kind of a time and place thing. If something breaks on the side of the road, I'll pay the 60 bucks to fix it. Uh, when I have the option to not do that, 20 bucks will work great for me. So, uh, boosters are out. Like I said, I'm not doing a crazy, crazy thorough rebuild on this. But let's grab that new kit. Made in China. Stamped all over the package. If this works, good. I will say, I've also tried some of the Chinese jets. Those ones are kind of shitty. The metering rod kit that they sell online is not that good. I've also never bought a full Edelbrock one. It's on my list for this summer once we get back into car season. But the uh, man, new floats, too. It's crazy. Floats, needles, jets, all of the fun things. Drop these back in. All I need is these paper gaskets. Metering rods. Like I said, I'm leaving the accelerator pump in because I don't have any issues with that. I'm not going to replace a bunch of stuff just for the sake of doing it if I don't have to. But here's the old gasket. And I don't remember. This might be an Edelbrock one. This might be a Chinese one. I don't really know. But that looks pretty good to me. Old one. New one. So let's drop these in. Only doing the paper gaskets right now. Because that's all we need. I even give you a little gauge tool. I 
If you're one of those people that would never take a carb apart just to replace some gaskets, I apologize. <laughs> Feel free to roll over in your grave. You're not wrong. Most of the time I would try and be more thorough and clear all this out, but... This is the vehicle that's going to the show on Saturday, one way or another. All right, so the primaries are done. Now we got to look at the secondaries. Gasket one. Let's compare this with the other one. Gasket two. Old, new. The fastest carb rebuild <laughs> ever. Like I said, I just drove this home yesterday, so I'm not overly concerned about it. If you're in another scenario or you don't know and you have one that's been sitting on the shelf forever, you might want to rethink what I'm doing or telling you. However, in my case, I drove this home. It was working. This is more of a courtesy than anything else. I just lost a carb linkage. Make sure your butterflies stay free when you're doing that. You don't want to have that bind up on you. But right here, we do have a rip in the gasket. It's on the actual carb body itself. We got this little section that kind of hung up, which is fine. That's expected. If the main gasket on the body of this has a rip in it, that would explain the vacuum leak issue that I was facing. So if we look at the top here, I don't need this float. But if we look at the top here, pull these pins. I'm not going to readjust or do anything on these floats at all. Might just give a quick visual check. But I'm fairly certain this is going to be okay. This carb was rebuilt last year. Kind of pissed I have to take it apart. But this section was missing. Hopefully that was the issue. If not, we'll find out. Where did I put the big one? And they give you two. So not only do I have better parts, I also have two parts. One dimple didn't get punched through here very well. Whatever. Relay this out, drop it over the needles. And the needles are going to fight me coming back down here in a minute. I know it. So we'll drop the floats back in first. Might have to adjust the metering rods a little bit. Double check the height here. Let me grab a drill bit. The old check here. Slightly out of adjustment. This could have been just for me. There we go. Quick drill bit check. I'm not going too crazy on this. Like I said, everything was working. Square these up. Accelerator pump spring is still on the bottom. Gasket is on. See if I can get lucky enough to do this without having to pull the metering rods, in my experience. I usually like to try and do that just to make sure everything lines up proper.
And there we have it. Carbs rebuilt. Let's put this back in the van. Fun van things. Where we're sitting in here and I almost want the carb facing this way, but we're not gonna do that because it's a van and everything's backwards. So motor goes towards the front of the car. We'll jump around to the other side. You got a couple washers and fine thread bolts for the studs. Just gonna get these queued up. Probably should have brought the tools out too, but who oh will? Put three of these on. The last one's a little bit goofy because we did do the AOD swap, so I got one. Oh, that's this one actually. One stud gets special treatment to hold the TV cable bracket. And then the last bracket we got for the TV cable bolts onto the rear section of the carb, like so. Gotta lift that one up a little bit to catch that one on here. And we got a linkage. My one complaint with the low car parts is the sheathing that they use on their stainless sucks does not hold up after multiple uses. It's an expensive kit too. Especially when you're cheap like me. But we'll hand snug these down and I'll go grab the drill. Quick little torque there. Carb linkage clicks back on. Choke cable goes back on. And then we gotta fix the fuel line still breather back on here too and I think I'm gonna replace the vacuum boots on here because these are dry rotted from sitting all winter hopefully I have these we'll find out vacuum lines back on ported vacuum up front manifold vacuum up front we are running vacuum lines on this one normally I don't um, but yeah, I did have to readjust this cable because the sheathing no longer fits in here because the end of the stainless got all messed up. Let me try and find a couple vacuum plugs. I need two short little vacuum plugs because these are dry rotted. This is kind of expected. They used to last a long time. Now, they don't hold up very well. I don't know if I have two, but I definitely need to replace one. I grab the wrench, we'll be right back. All right, we got a drill. I do not have another vacuum cap here, so I'm gonna have to hit the store tomorrow. We're gonna take the good end of that, put that back on, snug these down. Last corner one where the TV cable mounts get slightly in the way. So you do gotta hit that one with an open end wrench. It's just a carb so it doesn't need to be crazy, crazy tight. So there's that. Now, the last thing we gotta address is this busted fuel line. Probably should replace this section. We don't have time. So what we're gonna do is make it brand new again. And in order to do that, Move this clip back down. I have kind of wanted to go through and fix this. Uh, Alright, so I had to grab a pair of pliers, clean this up. So, cut off the broken section. Put the clamp back on. Some people would actually hardline this so it doesn't become a constant issue. Eh. I've had enough old things and not had issues with fuel lines forever, but new rubber is dog crap. I did all new lines on this yesterday, or last year, less than a year old, and they're shot already, well, based on that one. But we are good to hook this up and fire it up now. We have no air filter, no fuel in there. Mechanical pump.
Aces. So we're gonna let this warm up for a little while and then I'll come back, wait till the choke turns off. Then we'll retweak the idle screws just a little bit. It's pointless right now because the weather changes so frequently at this current juncture, but that will work. Before I put the air filter back on, I know it's gonna tweak it a little bit, but this will kind of at least get us in the ballpark. Let me just let this run and warm up. We'll be back when it's warm and we'll go through and tweak it. Little half cap is still sealing on vacuum. checking the TV cable. We're at zero right now in park. If I tap the throttle at all, five at eight throttle. Goes up to 23 under load, so we're good. We'll just let this warm up. All right, we've been running about 10 minutes, about 50 degrees out here right now, so we're gonna do some quick little idle mixture screw adjustments. I don't know if you guys can see the vacuum gauge on here. It's the one in the middle. I don't have you guys in the middle, that's fine. You don't need to be there. I'm grab a flathead. We're still a little on the cold side. This thing's really cold blooded, but we're pulling 15 to 16 inches of vacuum right now. So we're gonna go in with these screws. No, oh, that's too far. So that was seated. Half turn out, one more turn out, one more turn out. Half, one, half. We're one and a half out. One, one and a half. Seated, half, one, half. Probably should have cleaned this. If I push this side on the right side of the carb all the way in, it died. If I push the left side all the way in, it didn't die which tells me I got a clog somewhere in there. I should have cleaned it up, but... So now I'm just gonna adjust these to the highest vacuum. I know the left side bank is gonna need some work, unfortunately. I mean, she doesn't like running low, but... So half, one, half, two, two and a half out on the left side. Which tells me something's wrong there. And then it dies. It should die. But half, one, half, two. That's two and a half out on the right side, which is actually working better than the left. Still gotta tighten that alternator belt at some point, but that's fine. I could actually bump the timing a little bit. It would probably help out. I don't want to on this. Everything's been working. I'm trying to avoid messing with that. A week from now though, we might go half a turn in here. So that puts me at two on the right. One on the, one and a half on the right. We're idling at about 600 RPMs right now. So I want another half, one and a half turns on this. I never checked this. I think the needle on this left side might actually be messed up. But if I keep coming out and richening up the left bank, now we're up to 17 inches at idle. And we'll try and get a nice steady 17 here. And I do want to set this on the leanest side. Now we're down to 16, so we're gonna go back out. Flip the throttle every now and again, let it resettle itself. Right 
right there, we got a nice steady-ish 17. I'm gonna try and just level the needle out. Now we're at a nice solid 17 to 17 and a half. Just drop the idle hair here. And we're at 17 and a half at about an 800 RPM idle. In gear, we drop down to about 600. So we're at 17 at idle in park. 15 and idle. There we have it. I'm gonna throw the air filter back on. Put the doghouse back on and we're gonna take this up to the gas station. If you've never owned a van, especially an early one, there's something really awesome about uh, ripping around with the motor right next to you. Vacuum gauge is in the middle, I don't know what's gonna focus. Tax over here, bolt gauge, and then I got a trans pressure gauge down below. I don't know how much of that you guys are gonna be able to see. This is a 302 roller cam 5.0. Um, I did give up on points and put a Pertronix electronic distributor in here. Ooh. It's a little rattly. What you're hearing there is the little door latches, but motor's down here. You can hear everything, smell everything. Doghouse is off right now, which is fine. Not too concerned in that regard. I definitely have to fix. Uh, we're gonna have to lube up these linkages a little bit from sitting over the winter outside, not covered. We don't do a whole lot of the, uh, I'm probably gonna bump the idle up a hair too. I do wanna throw some fresh gas in here. Top off the tank since we're gonna be driving it this weekend. Alternator belt needs to be snugged up. That's not gonna happen now. Back home, little WD-40 on the linkage. But we'll top her off with some fresh gas. See how that goes. This was supposed to get that Summit 500 carb, so maybe this summer we'll mess around with that. Run in and grab some stuff quick. And we'll come back. Well, retreated back to the garage. Got the van fixed. That's ready to go. It will make it there and back. Kind of a short-winded video at the end there. It got dark. You can't see anything. Today, I'm going to start slapping all this together. Uh, made the executive decision. This is not going to be a starting, running, riding bike going to the show. Dress it all up. Get everything else done. I'm off work next week, so we will get it fired up immediately next week. But we got to start working on the aesthetics. And there's a ton of shop things that we got to plan on loading in for that show. So if you're in Illinois and uh, at the Bad Grease Show in Lombard next this Saturday, come on out, stop by, say hi, and catch you on the next one.